Okay, hi there, welcome uh, to a macro video. Uh, in our economics lesson today, we were thinking a little bit about some of the gains from trade arising from specialization. And uh, we went through an example of how you can show some of the gains from trade using a PPF diagram, Production Possibility Frontier. So I thought I'd just spend a few minutes taking you through the example we used in the lesson. Uh, and hopefully you can use that as part of your analysis diagrams. So this is all about trade theory and the PPF, the way in which you can use a good analysis diagram to score top marks. Let's consider two countries. Let's consider Chile and uh, Brazil. And uh, they are both producing, initially, they're both producing steel and also copper. So this is the standard two-country, two-product model that you'll be hopefully familiar with if you've studied the theory of comparative advantage. So this is a production possibility curve. We're looking at the outputs, in this case of steel and copper, output of steel on the y-axis, the output of copper on the on the x-axis. Let me draw in view the PPF for Chile. I'm drawing it as a straight line, that assumes that the marginal opportunity cost uh, between steel and uh, copper is constant. Obviously, most of the time we draw PPFs as concave to the origin, as non-linear, reflecting diminishing returns. But in this example, let's assume that uh, the PPF is a straight line. That certainly helps the analysis. That's for Chile. And here's the one for Brazil. And you can see that Brazil can produce more of both. So in that sense, it has an absolute advantage in both steel and copper. But if I just put some numbers on here, here we go. This is where you start to think about the comparative advantage. Funnily enough, a lot of the students were saying a PPF diagram makes it easier for them to work out the comparative advantage. Uh, so in this example, uh, Chile is only half as good at producing uh, steel, but it's pretty close to Brazil in terms of copper. Uh, so Brazil has the relative advantage in steel and Chile in copper. And the explanation for this lies in the concept of opportunity cost. You see, if you take the PPF for Chile, uh, look at the ratio there for every... Uh, they can produce three units of copper for every unit of steel. So in other words, for every extra unit of steel, they'd have to sacrifice three units of copper. Is that also the case for Brazil? Well, not quite, not quite as big. Uh, if they sacrificed, so if they, if they produce an extra 20 units of steel, they only have to sacrifice 33 units of copper. So the ratio isn't 3 to 1, it's less than 3 to 1, isn't it, for Brazil. So therefore Brazil has the relative advantage, if you measure it in terms of opportunity cost, in steel, and therefore Chile must have a relative advantage in copper. Don't forget to press the pause button at any, at any point during the video if you want to take a, a few more moments to, to think about these things. Let's start off with output combinations. Let's start off with both countries halfway down their PPFs. So uh, in this situation, Brazil is producing 100 units of steel and 165 units of copper. And Chile is halfway down its PPF, 50 units of, of uh, steel and 150 units of copper. So those are the outputs that if they didn't specialise in uh, their respective outputs. But what's going to happen is that uh, Chile makes sense for it to shift resources, to move resources out of steel into copper production. So Chile will tend to move down their PPF and specialise in copper. What about Brazil? Well, Brazil will do the opposite in the sense they can specialise in steel production. In theory, they can move all the way up to the y-axis. Then They won't necessarily do that, but in theory they could. So Brazil shifts up, moves up their PPF towards top output of steel. Chile reallocates resources and specialises in copper. Okay, so that's the idea of specialisation, which is basically involving reorganising, reallocating your scarce resources from one sector into another. So how can we show the potential gains from trade using a PPF diagram? Well, we're starting off in a situation with 5150 for Chile, 100, 165 for Brazil. Countries to benefit from specialization and an exchange need to find, need to reach a mutually beneficial terms of trade for the two products. Uh, mutually beneficial means that both parties benefit. And so in this sense, trade can be seen as a positive sum game. Both parties potentially stand to benefit, not necessarily equally, but they stand to benefit if they can agree mutually beneficial terms of trade. Now, you can work this one out for yourself, and there's no unique answer. 
But trading two copper for one steel does work, does benefit both nations. Let's think about, I'm going to use my cursor here, let's think about Chile, which is down here with a lot of copper. If it didn't trade with Brazil, they'd have to sacrifice three units of copper for every extra unit of steel. Now they only have to sacrifice two for one. So that's going to be a benefit to Chile. Let's go to the top of the diagram here. Brazil might have been producing a lot of steel. If it, if it didn't trade, pardon me, if it didn't trade, it would have to give up 20 steel and get 33 copper in exchange. Well, now if it gives up 20 steel, it's going to get 40 copper. Can you see that? So two for one will benefit both countries. And if we then do a little bit of tweaking of the diagram, Brazil, for example, could produce 200 steel and in theory trade it for 400 uh, copper. So this gradient here is two for one, which is higher than the previous gradient. So it's benefiting Brazil. That's the PPF for Brazil with trade. What about Chile? Well, Chile's got 300 units of copper. They don't want to sacrifice three for one, but two for one will work. They could produce 300 units of copper and then trade at two for one. They could, in theory, go up to 150 units of steel. Now, this blue dotted line here, if you like, the trade PPF has the same gradient for both countries because we found a mutually beneficial terms of trade. I hope this makes sense. So effectively, trade can shift out a country's PPF. I've drawn it as a dotted line because, in a sense, it's only a PPF that's possible with trade. It wouldn't be possible if countries were, were not open, if they were operating a closed economy. That means that trade can then allow a country to produce and consume more of both than they did at the start. You see, if we think about... Uh, these countries, let's think about uh, Chile first. It was halfway down its PPF. In theory, it could move somewhere there, diagonally right. It could move to there and have more of both. What about Brazil? Well, let me copy this one in. It started there halfway. In theory, Brazil could now move diagonally right somewhere there, let's say. Again, more of both. Can you see that trade following specialization can lead to both countries enjoying more copper and more steel than they had before. There is a, a gain from specialization and then trade on the basis of finding a mutually acceptable, mutually beneficial terms of trade. Here we are using the PPF idea to show some of the potential gains from trade. It's a good analysis diagram to use, particularly if you want to get a top mark for explaining, examining some of the potential benefits of trading goods and services between countries. Well, thanks for sticking with this one, and thanks very much for joining this macro video.